Hi, Miriam. Thanks for sending a new set of essays. Um, I understand it sounds like you have a lot on your plate right now. Um, so all I can say is bravo to you for working hard while also dealing with uh, young children at home. Um, I know how challenging that can be. So let's take a look at what you wrote today. Um, I know you said that you were copying these rather quickly into the computer. Um, I'm a little concerned right now about your paragraphing. So please make sure that you do this accurately. Like if an examiner were to see this, it looks like you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten paragraphs. And that's just way, way, way too much. Okay. So even when you type your answers for me, uh, please work on this because I can tell you right now that if this is how your paragraphing was, it, you would probably get a five for coherence and cohesion because in task two, paragraphing is important. So uh, it's a good habit and I just want to make sure that you are paragraphing uh, appropriately. So I'd like to see that, okay? All right, so let's get into this. Um, Especially in large cities, pollution is becoming an increasing problem. I believe that the reasons for it vary, but each individual, as well as the government, is to be held responsible to find more ecological ways of living. This essay will offer some solutions. Okay, I like that. I definitely liked this, is to be held responsible. It's a nice formal expression. It's advanced grammar, so good job there. Uh, okay. Nowadays, everyone wants to be flexible and independent. These expectations lead to the need of owning a car. In many cases, every adult member of a family has uh, his or her own car. The results can be seen during every rush hour in large cities, crowded streets, thus polluted air. Additionally, people do not find good jobs in rural areas. Therefore, a rising number of people flee to no Ah, uh, yeah, flee the countryside in order to live in the city, thus large cities grow even more. This overcrowding can become a challenge for garbage disposal, car, garbage collectors, respectively. Mm. For garbage disposal and garbage collectors, you don't need to say respectively, just garbage disposal and garbage collectors. Full stop. Evidently, more people living in closer space leads to more waste, which then again leads to overfilled garbage bins. Okay, um, so there are, uh, I liked a lot of this, a lot of the grammar was good, a lot of the vocabulary was good, you had some nice um, pieces of cohesion. I want to talk to you about what I think would have worked better. I think that when I read, when I started reading the paragraph, I wasn't really clear where you were going with it, and I wasn't clear what the central idea of your paragraph was. This is an issue of coherence and cohesion, okay? Um, the central idea of the paragraph should be laid out very clearly and very um, early on into your paragraph. How can you do that? Well, there are a couple of ways, but for me, the clearest way is to have a very um, just really direct topic sentence to that paragraph. So. For example, there are a number of reasons that have led to pollution in urban cities, or there are a number of, um, of uh, facts about modern life which have caused um, pollution in major cities. So this way, the reader can orient himself or herself and say, oh, okay, so this paragraph talks about those reasons. Okay, and what are you really telling us here when you say nowadays everyone wants to be uh, flexible and independent? You're basically telling us that one of the reasons behind this is our human nature and our need to be flexible and independent. So do you see how this ties it in when you say one of the reasons is this? Okay, because when you start off your paragraph, just with this sentence, I'm not following your train of thought. I'm not in your brain, so I'm not entirely sure what you're thinking and how you're going with this. Does that make sense? So you really want to follow some of these prescribed um, 
organizational tips to make sure that your your paragraph reads like a, like a chain. So each sentence, each idea is a link in that chain and they must be really nicely tied together. Okay. So just to reiterate, I'm saying that I want a clear topic sentence here where you tell us that there are numerous reasons or there are numerous causes behind the increase in pollution in our urban cities. One such reason is our need to be flexible and independent, which has led us to uh, needing a car. In fact, uh, in some cases, every member of a family may have a car. Okay. And then this was fine. Okay. Uh, additionally, people do not find good jobs in rural areas. Therefore, comma, a rising number of people flee the countryside uh, in order to live to the city. Thus, you need some commas here too, okay? Thus, large cities grow even more. This overcrowding can become a challenge for garbage disposal and garbage uh, collectors. Fine. All right, so yeah, the second part of that was good. The first part needed, like I said, a little work. I want you to be careful with this, okay? Like I said, here it looks like it's its own paragraph. You definitely don't want that. Remember to stick to a four paragraph structure. So introduction, body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and then conclusion. And questions are an interesting thing. So, I'm not opposed to them, but I have heard uh, some IELTS tutors say, no, no, stay away from it. Um, it's not really appropriate in this kind of an essay. I don't entirely agree with that. Um, the IELTS essay is not considered uh, just an, um, uh, an academic essay. And so this kind of device, I think, can work. I think it can be interesting. I think it kind of surprises the reader a little bit because we're not usually used to seeing questions asked of us. So I'm going to say go ahead and use it, but remember the importance of good paragraphing. Okay. Uh, all right. So how can these tendencies be turned? Hamburg gives a good example in respect, uh, in respect to making bikes an attractive alternative to cars. Lately, there has been a big change in the city's landscape. Careful with your typing. More and more city bikes have been made, it's B-E-E-N, made available. Not only, ah, not only can a person find a cheap rental bike on every corner, uh, but there has been made great effort to build broader bike lanes by canceling parking spots also this is again it's an advanced grammatical structure when you begin a sentence with not only inversion follows and we also use a but also at the end okay uh, in my opinion this leads to three effects okay firstly fewer cars fewer cars find parking Thus, drivers will eventually give up and switch to bikes whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Secondly, comma, bikers feel more secure and, take, and taken seriously in traffic. Last but not least, by finding free rental bikes in every corner, one can still be flexible and independent without a car. All right. I really want you to be careful with this. Um, you're basically giving us a list. Um, I don't know about this. I really would like to see you sticking to a more, um, how can I say this, prescribed kind of um, organization of your paragraphs. So what do I mean? I mean, clear topic sentence, okay, and then your main idea, okay? So one idea which would potentially solve the problems of pollution in urban cities would be to promote the use of bicycles instead of cars. For example, Hamburg is an excellent example of where this measure has been um, um, adopted. Okay, and then you could say that as a result of this, uh, there are fewer cars on the road, less pollution, and in general, the city atmosphere has 
become one that is far more pleasing and pleasant to both inhabitants and to tourists. So that's the way I would like to see this developed. Okay. Clear topic sentence where you say, yes, there are solutions. Um, and then you give us the idea that, you know what, guys, bicycles would be a wonderful solution to this. Let's promote them. And then you give us this example about Hamburg. So I kind of feel like you went about this a little differently. And different can be okay, but you also have to be careful that you're um, focusing on the right things. Like anytime you want to have any sort of support for something, having three reasons is probably a bit too much, okay? And it also keeps you from maybe exploring some other parts of the question uh, fully as well. Um, you know, there's, if you look at the band descriptors, there's something which says that in task achievement, it says covers all parts of the task, but some parts are more fully covered than others. You don't want that. You want to give an equal amount of time to everything. And so I kind of felt like you were really just going on and on about this thing with bicycles uh, at the expense of something else. So, however, this does not solve the garbage problem. Admitted, admittedly, comma, it is easier said than done, but since the pandemic, comma, a growing number of people realize the advantages of a rural life. Living expenses are more affordable and living in the countryside is more spacious. Nevertheless, comma, a good city job is still possible due to the option of home office. Uh, okay, I, we usually call this remote work. Therefore, there is less need to move into crowded cities. Um, okay, here I, you kind of lost me. Um, I mean, what are you suggesting to us? Your your suggestion here, your solution is not clear. At the very end of the paragraph, it's I can kind of understand that you're saying that if we want to solve the garbage disposal problem, then remote working is a good solution. But again, I want you to change the order of these ideas and make it more, um, like, how can I say this? Top, bottom, rather than bottom, top, or I don't know if that makes sense. So start by telling us what you think. All right. So, however, this does not solve the garbage problem. One solution to this would be encouraging remote work. If this were to happen, more people would live in rural areas uh, while holding a, an urban job. Therefore, these cities would be less crowded and there would be less garbage for garbage collectors to deal with. Okay, so does that a top, top down? That's what I want to say, top down. <laughs> That's the word I think I was looking for. Okay, so do you understand the difference? You're, we're saying the same thing. It's the order and the clarity that is, is just changing here. All right, let's see your uh, conclusion. In conclusion, I believe that pollution in large cities can be reduced by offering an accessible option to car, to, no, ah, to car alternatives, I understand. By offering and by offering more home office hours, which takes away the need to live where you work. Okay, fine. Um, so Miriam, you should have a good idea about what worked in this essay and what didn't. Grammar was good, vocabulary was good. Um, definitely work on the coherence and cohesion, making sure your paragraphs are appropriate, that you are using the correct um organization of your ideas okay and as far as task achievement make sure that you're covering all parts of the task equally let's take a look at the the stacked bar chart here about cars the this graph gives an overview of nine european countries and their preferences and car brands in the year 2018 european capitalized the chart distinguishes the selling maybe numbers of Ford, Audi, and BMW for each of the countries individually. Okay. It is demonstrated that Hungary sold the most cars out of all countries represented. This was, this was followed by France with about a hundred thousand fewer cars. All right. This is meaningless if we don't know the figure figure for Hungary. Okay. First, tell us what Hungary's number was, and then you can tell us that France had 100,000 less. 
With less than 100,000 cars in total, Belgium had not even reached one-third of Hungary's and France's selling numbers. Okay. Followed closely by Italy, which sold just over... All right, this is not a sentence. This is a fragment, so you have to be careful here. So here you could say, this was followed closely by Italy, which sold just a little over 100,000 cars in 2018. The people of the UK, Germany, Ireland, Holland, and Poland purchased each more or less than 2,000 cars in the given period. Um, all right, let me make sure you mentioned all the countries here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that was smart. I like that. Now you've mentioned all the countries at least once by name. So you're out of that terrible band four category, okay? We know what all the categories are, and so that's good. Um, and so that's fine. I actually liked what you did here, okay? Uh, especially this. So that was nicely done. Let's see what you did in the next paragraph. In respect uh, to brand preference, the chart reveals that the least sold brand in general was Audi. Good. However, while Hungary and Germany sold more Audis than the other countries, BMW was sold the most out of the three brands. Ford was mainly sold in Holland and Hungary, but it is not well represented in Germany, Italy and Germany. Okay. Here I wanted a little data. You gave us absolutely zero data about the car companies. So it feels a little um, underrepresented in terms of data. In conclusion, all three car brands were purchased in each country, but the preferences vary as well as the selling numbers in total. All right, uh, fine. Um, so I wanted a little more data. I think that for your conclusion, you could have said something else. Um, I also don't really think that you needed this sentence. So here's what I would do. This graph gives an overview of nine European countries and their preference in car brands uh, between Ford, Audi, and BMW in the year 2018. And then you can get rid of this sentence altogether. And then for your conclusion, I would have said something different. I would have said something like uh, overall... Um, Hungary sold the most cars while Belgium sold the least. Done. Or Hungary sold the most cars uh, while BMW seems to be the most preferred car brand. That would be a good conclusion or an overview. Okay? So I like what you did, but here you absolutely needed some kind of data. Uh, you said that the least sold brand was Audi. Uh, you said BMW was sold the most. Give us a figure. Say that it was sold uh, roughly around 100,000 cars per country, uh, with the exception of Belgium. So we need some data there, all right? Without data, you're not going to be able to, to get a high score in task achievement. So keep that in mind. All right, so um, thanks for sending these in, Miriam. Thanks for working hard. And I will wait to see your next set of essays. Um, let me know if the feedback in this video makes sense if you can apply some of these things that we're talking about um, and if you have any questions. Okay, so I'm looking forward to your next set. Good luck.